Let's do this. No! <laughs> Hey YouTube, this is Peck Tech. And this is KK Lemonade. And it was bound to happen. I guess today is the day you cross over and do your own thing. So we're gonna gently step into saltwater aquariums. <laughs> Before we get started, why did you decide to go to saltwater tanks? <laughs> well, with saltwater you get a different variety of cool types of corals and fish and different things they can do. And it's just kind of it's just more interesting um, sometimes just to try something new. So, this is your rebellious stage? Yes, this is the worst that it's gonna get. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on board. So let's talk about this aquarium. What do we have here? Well, this is the Fluel C Evo 13.5 gallon. So is it 13 gallons all in here? Or is it, I guess this is like a gallon in the filter yeah, area, right? Yeah, it has about a gallon and a half in the filter area, and the rest of it um, is the 12 gallon that is going to be occupied by the fish, live rock, stuff like that. Yeah, and the box, you can see, you know, just looking at the box, you can see that it is very similar to a lot of these other fluval kit tanks that you see, and that it's got a built-in light, mm -hmm. right? Yep. And, uh, it's got a lot of other features that I think I think we've mainly seen on, on things like the Flex and the Specs and, and stuff. So it's just like, it's a really huge spec. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But with saltwater tanks, it's usually the bigger the better, just because um, whenever you have a small tank, just like with a small freshwater tank, um, easy, it's easier for things to go wrong fast. And that's especially critical when it comes to reef tanks, which is actually this setup is reef ready. And that's what I plan on doing with this one um, eventually once it gets to all the right water parameters. When we take a look at the back panel of the packaging here, we can see that it's got a filter system that's almost the exact same as the Fluval Flex. Now it's got this compartment here and then it's got the filter mechanism and then a space for the pump and probably a heater or something like that to put on the back side. Uh, it does not come with a protein skimmer. That's an extra product, and we'll probably add that later, but we're gonna start with just putting the basic uh, basic aquarium together. And it also doesn't come with a heater as well, but you can, yeah. that's another thing that you can buy um, just because there's a whole lot of different heaters outside of the fluid brand too. And something I'm not sure about is if, you know, a lot of times I see people uh, adding chillers to their aquariums to make the water colder so you might not always need a heater. Mm -hmm. It in just your depends tank. on what you want to put in your tank. I think reef reef stuff that would it, do reef uh, invertebrates and stuff. Do they like warmer water or colder water? They usually um, kind of it's kind of the average like what you would do with fresh water as well. It's usually like around, the tropical guys, like yeah. the seventies and yeah, it's usually around that. Maybe a little bit on the colder side of the seventies. And so there are a lot of YouTube channels out there for saltwater. Uh, who have you been watching? Um, I've been watching primarily Coral Fish 12G just because he has some really good videos on um, kind of with my situation because I plan on taking this tank with me to college soon uh, whenever I go. So you found those helpful? Yeah, I did find those helpful. I know. I like, You've been working with a lot of salt water at work and stuff like mm -hmm. that. I've never wanted to kind of delve into like just that little bit of extra difficulty that it takes to... Uh, to handle salt water. So I'm proud of you for, for stepping out and doing your own thing. So Thanks. Uh, that being said, I will not take care of this whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the goal. <laughs> I will occasionally, maybe when I'm going around the house for all aquarium update, I'll give you a little preview of what this is going to look like. And we might talk about it a little bit more here and there, like on the live streams and whatnot, but you're going to be doing updates on this on your channel, right? Yeah, absolutely. On KK Lemonade, I'm going to be trying to do frequent updates and maybe some videos on, um, Whenever I go to set up livestock, maybe um, how I decorate it and stuff like that and how it's doing, just my overall review of the tank, um, I'll try to do stuff like that frequently on my channel. Yep, so she's going to do some real simple videos on her own. Again, that's not going to not a, it's not the Pick Tech 2 channel or anything like that. That's her own thing. And she'll do as much or, or as little as she wants. But this aquarium 
It's going to look awesome, right? You're going to take real good care of it. Yeah, I am. I'm dying to get this out of the box and see what it looks like. Me too. To me, it looks like a mix between the Fluval Flex and the Spec 5 gallon. So I'm curious to see exactly what we got in here. Yeah. All right, go ahead and open it up. All right, so it has some really nice packaging through here. Um, I'm starting to keep the edges intact. Looks like it has some more of this on the bottom too. All right, this looks like it might be the, the lid and the light fixture that comes with it. I'm not sure exactly. What's in there. Probably the pump. Right. Inside, just some advertisements, and you can see see the base. This has a base on. I guess that's really similar to the the edge, right? Yeah. So it's a good kind of mix between all of the Fluval Aquarium. Okay. Move the box away. All right. It's like we're gonna have to lift it up again for the rest of the packaging. Pull off this little foam thing. Your fingers. Hello? Wow! <laughs> oh, wow! It made me make the wow sound. Oh, <laughs> uh, I, I want one of these for a freshwater. <laughs> <laughs> I think they actually do make a freshwater version of this as well. Do they make a freshwater version of this? We'll have to look that up. I know Guys, this is neat. So that's the stand underneath here. Okay, so we're going to take a quick look in the back and just see what all it comes with. Uh, just like the Flex, there's that little fin. Uh, kind of comes up there. I'm pretty sure that's uh, to fit a protein skimmer on. And uh, as you can see, the Fluval Flex also has this little block out, and the filter system is really, really similar. So it's almost the same kind of deal. Of course, I've modified mine a little bit with some foam. So we've got this extra filter compartment here. What's that that you've got? I found this down here. I think, I'm not exactly sure what it's for, but it fits perfectly and clips on to this part right here. Um, so I think this could be to adjust the flow possibly. My goodness. Um, which is good for different types of corals that you would put there um, that need different types of flow because some of them kind of need to be in a low And of area. course it's got its safety. There's a tiny hole right here. The flex has bigger vents on this side. This just, and this has more like what the spec has, which is a little tiny safety hole so if the water ever gets below here it can suck water in through there and not burn up your pump unless this is blocked now if this is blocked for some reason you might be in, in bad shape and this is different like i haven't seen this on any of the other tanks before so that's really interesting yeah it's really easy to pop off too just because it has that kind of invention to keep it on there neat all right so and what else do we have in here looks like uh some hoses and yeah, probably for the pump. Can you pull them out? Or yeah. My um, arms won't fit in there. <laughs> so it looks like it has, looks like this just fits into this hose here um, that would go to the pump. But it has these dual flows, so you can adjust it to move it into different parts of your tank. Um, much like the specs in the other Fluval tanks before, it has the same kind of basic design. Yeah, that really looks the same as the Fluval. Um, that looks exactly like the Fluval Flex is set up too. So here are the other packages that came with the, the tank kit. And I guess we're gonna need something to open this with. Oh, I got it. How's this? That's a little, it's pretty intense. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to use this. <laughs> Good. All right, so let's look at this big box first. I'm guessing that is your pump. Looks like it. All right, has this little piece here. Yep. And then this is the side. Little instructions on how to safely install this. Uh, and then this is the pump. Pretty good. That looks like strong it, powered. Pump. It, it looks like the exact same pump that came with the Flex. Once again, it's uh, it's the same pump that came in the Flex. And this, which looks like uh, you could adjust if you wanted to put. A smaller hose in here or something like that. This just unscrews and you can switch to a different type of hose perhaps depending on what your goals are in there. Now I don't think that the hose that comes with it would fit that one but at least you have that extra option with the filter. Yeah and this is the hose it came with right so we're just gonna 
go ahead and put that on the barbs. So it just slides down on the barbs here. Oh. This does come apart. It looks like you can adjust the flow from there. Well, uh, no, that this actually that's how you take off the impeller. So if you're gonna go if you need to clean your impeller for whatever reason or it's rattling and making a sound, this is usually where you would go investigate it. That's how you take the impeller off. But what's important about that is you can clean this. This is a little pre-filter sponge and uh, you want to be able to clean that out every so often just to keep the keep the pump working at full efficiency and that just kind of pops right off. So that's cool. Okay, so we got the pump, we got the tube that goes up, but now we need the part that goes right here and that's going to be this. This is going to fit onto those barbs kind of like kind of like the other side did. Okay, once you've got it on there and you feel pretty good about the connection, we can undo the cable. Now I want the cord to come up and then come out around over here somewhere, right? So I'm going to put it down with the cord facing this way. Of course, we could easily, you know, we'll just do it this way. You can do it either way. I kind I like to have, I like to have the intake be over here, so the water kind of come up and yeah. So let's do, let's do it this way. That way we've got this part facing in inward like that. And it does have little suction cups on the bottom that you can use to kind of press down on that. Can you get your arm in there? Yeah. You, if you've got tiny arms like her, <laughs> you can stick your arm in there and kind of just give it a little, give it a little press down. And we're going to flip this over so you can see the other side. Go ahead and let that cord just go. You kind of, it doesn't exactly fit into this hole. As you can see here, it just kind of, it just it doesn't fit in there. But um, what you can do is you just screw this in and hold this up at the same time. And that gets that tight connection. Adjust this to whichever direction you like, as well as these here. I'll do that once I set up this aquarium. If you want flow in different areas of the aquarium, you can kind of just move these around and you get flow options. <laughs> Flop options. Flop options. So what else you got there? In the smaller white box there is a power supply for the light. Okay, so what's in that box? All right, in here we have the hood that it looks like for just the filter part of the aquarium. Oh, that's for the back of it. Yeah, because the other part of the hood has a built-in light actually. So um, that's why you have to have that separate so you won't have to... Well, well you can also, like, you can... We can maintain the filter without removing the entire hood. So you need, yeah. if you need to leave this covered, um, you can take this off and on. There is a section right here um, that you can uh, pop off. Oh, uh, and that's where you pop off to put the protein skimmer in. Exactly, yeah. Ah. And it even has a section for the cords already allotted for that. So you don't have to have a half on lid. Well, that's pretty cool. We got a little bit more to open though. All right. We have, it looks like it's the LED light fixture here. Um, it has a nice long cord to go with this power supply. These nice LEDs are going to do wow, multiple that's actually, functions. That's um, actually pretty nice. Yeah, and they advertise this as a reef ready aquarium set. And this is definitely going to support any reef aquarium. Um, that you would need. And you can see here it's got it's got different colored LEDs and they're embedded in sort of this gelatin sort of substance mm -hmm. and I, I guess will help it remain waterproof. It, it looks like it'd be sticky almost but it's not. And this here this is aluminum so this is a nice big heat sink and that's also going to increase the life of your LEDs. Yeah. You know, heat sink right at the top. That's cool and unexpected. I haven't seen one like this. It's actually vented and everything. It's a true heat sink. Yeah, that's definitely a really good uh, light for this aquarium setup. Hmm. And it looks like this this part here that we're going to unbox is definitely going to be the lid. Yeah, the last part has to be the lid. So let's just take a look at it. Alrighty. Then we have 
lid. Okay. And the lid is just going to pop right in with this one right here. Um, and it looks like it has a place for the cord on the light to go through for your light and just put it through one of the holes like you see through here. It also looks like here. That's um, a feeding hole. Yeah, it has a feeding hole like the Flex does. Yeah, the Flex has a very similar feeding hole. It's right there conveniently placed. I'm going to go ahead and take off this section of the lid just to make that easier. Right now, run this through right here. Pull it through while you. And it should just place in there, huh? Yeah, it fits right into the lid. Oh, this is a touch sensitive light too. So when it's when we've got it powered on, we should be able to just touch it. It's not a real button. It just looks like a little lump right here. <laughs> yeah. So we could just press on that, and that's that's how you uh, turn it on and cycle it through its different lights, right? Yeah, absolutely. And it has a really cool um, sleek design. So it has these uh, white lights here, um, and then it also has, if you tap it one more time, it gets to like the night blue um, lights that they have through here, and then you can just touch it again to turn it off. And that works. That's yeah. that works a lot like the specs do. The specs have that same touch sensitive light that kind of cycles through the different ones. So all on, that has the blue lights and the white lights and uh, that would be your typical on setting. And then you tap it again and you get just the blue. Just the blue, like if you want some nighttime vibes or something like that. All right, and, then and then if you do it like that, it's disco. Yeah. It's disco. Quick little rave for your fish and, and corals. You can love still, that. <laughs> you can still keep this on a timer. You just turn it on to the setting you want it to be on, and when the timer goes off, it all turns off. And when it comes back on, it knows what setting it had. It'll turn on with that. Yeah, okay, to me, to me, this definitely looks like, it definitely looks like a mix between the, the spec five gallon and the Fluval Flex kind of mixed together. It's got that same kind of larger volume that the Fluval Flex does, but it's got that square format with the filter in the back like the spec. And they also actually make this in a five gallon version I opted to get the larger one because it is going to be a lot easier for a first saltwater tank, um, especially since I am planning on doing an nano tank and those can be difficult in general. Yeah, and I think the five gallon version really is a spec, isn't it? Yeah. It's just maybe with a different kind of light or something. It looks very similar. It's got that hexagon pattern at the top, which I'm not sure exactly what that's for, unless it's maybe to help hide the water line, like calcium buildup in the water line or yeah, something. Yeah, it's definitely going to help with the salt creep that happens in saltwater tanks, too. Hmm. So it has this really cool base on the bottom, so you can put it on something that's a little bit smaller than it, and it's going to have a cool elevating effect to it. And um, it's As long really as it's still stable. You still need a stable, sturdy stand, but... It doesn't have to be the full length of the aquarium like a traditional one, right? Yeah, absolutely. And it's really good for putting it on a desktop, um, like a lot of people do in dorm rooms or in offices or something like that. Um, so it's not going to be directly on the surface that you put it on. It's got this great filter system in the back, and of course it's transparent. It's It's got that same, same mesh stuff on the side there to kind of hide it a little bit, but you can still see what's going on there, and especially when you look in the back. You can see everything that's happening inside that filter, so there'll be no questions as to what's happening in the back of there or trying to peer down the top there with a flashlight. That'd be the worst. So you can still see everything that's going on back there. Overall, it's a really cool tank. This is going to be an interesting... This is still not big for salt water, though, right? No, not at all. Usually, anything that is below around 30 gallons is considered a nano tank. So um, this is definitely a nano nano tank if you think of it that way. So we're still probably going to have a hard time with this. We should just expect that you're going to have the difficulties you have with a, with a smaller aquarium, but we're going to try anyway. Because... You only live once, man. When you get a saltwater tank, you don't just get the tank. You have to get other stuff too. Uh, what are some other things that someone might get? Well, you're definitely going to need, at least, um, at least with this one, around one inch thick of sand and usually live sand is the way that I like to go. I know if this is my first tank but this is what I usually recommend. And live sand just contains live bacteria that's why it's called that right? Yeah absolutely so um, usually it comes in a bag that is um, 
has liquid in it and it has that pre-bacteria already in there and it comes in a lot of different colors too um they have like like whitish pink white black and white and just plain black is kind of the basic um sands there you're gonna see um and what are you planning on putting in there i'm thinking about putting black sand into the bottom of this just because it does hide some algae problems that um, can arise in there and plus it's going to really make the fish and the coral that I'm going to put in there pop. Oh, what did it, did it come with a guide or something? What's this? Yeah, it did come with a guide and it has uh, step by step, step instructions on actually how to set it up, how to mix salt water too. Um, oh, it shows all the constru all everything that fits together and how it fits together. Yeah, and on this side it has um, what it is, the purpose for it, and how to maintenance it and replace it. And and as well as daily, weekly, and monthly monthly instructions on how to take care of your tank, which is a really awesome, quick guide for any first time aquarist. How neat! Yeah, it's got it's got daily maintenance, all scheduled out for you. You just put that on your calendar, and you're good to go. Yeah, and on the other side, it does have um, instructions on where you should put your tank, like you know, not near a window, near somewhere where there's a strong power supply, and um, stuff like that and things that you should do whenever you're setting it up like you might want to rinse your aquarium for any of like the factory dust or shipping dust that would be on there and on this side it has instructions on how to set up the protein skimmer and as well as adding livestock and whatever you want to do that cool and what's the recommendations as far as fish and coral goes for this type of aquarium all right so i think we're going to take a look we're going to peruse through the instructions and kind of a new thing we're trying where we actually read the instructions before we do things. <laughs> <laughs> How neat. You know, why not? Because why not give good information to people, right? So <laughs> we're going to take a look. I'm going to read them in French, I think. Good thing I've taken two years of high school French so I can totally read uh, this. You read the French one and I'll try to read the Spanish All one. All right. No, let's just read the English one. <laughs> let's read the... We're going to take a look <laughs> at every language in this <laughs> guide here. And uh, then we're going to get this set up in our room. Yeah. All right. All right, so I just got back from my fish store that I work at. This is kind of a local one, the aquarium. Um, I got a whole bunch of stuff here. I got some live rock, some seeded matrix, my water, and a whole bunch of other supplies that I'll show you whenever I go to sit up my tank. Recording. And first you gotta unplug it though, so you don't electrocute yourself. Just rinsing off all the stuff. So first we're going to install the heater that I bought. So that's the heater that I bought. Just gonna install this real quick. And then I'll just run this whole cord back here with my other cord. All right, so I've rinsed off everything. So now I'm going to start putting things into the aquarium. So I have this giant pound of, well, this is 13.8 pounds of live rock that I'm going to be putting in here. So it comes in this big thing of paper, newspaper. It's all wrapped up. I got some pre-seeded live rock. Um, just because I'm kind of impatient and I want to get this thing started fairly fast. It's looking pretty cool, I think. Um, definitely smells like the ocean. Gonna go ahead and say that. All right, I'm just gonna lay this puppy in and start arranging this the way that I think it should look. I'm doing a live rock first so I can fill in the sand later. I could probably stand to get some more live rock, but I wasn't sure exactly what all I wanted, so I might add a piece, like some smaller pieces later on. I'm just gonna add it in a cup at a time.
instead of putting it into this this is too big can't do that I'm going to put it into the part where the protein skimmer would normally go back here Okay, now I'm gonna get the rest of the water and fill this bad boy up some more. Okay, it's gonna be a slow process, I can tell. Just because I'm 17 and I don't have buff arms. But something really cool that I don't know if I'm gonna be able to capture with these cameras, so I'm gonna use my own. My little uh, phone here. You see that hole here? Water does come out of this whenever you're filling it up, especially if you do it for one of these back chambers. I'm filling it up right here. Yeah, so it's gonna slowly fill this up and that will have minimal cloudiness. As you can see, I already don't have that much cloudiness, especially for beginning. Let's see what happens to do this. Yellow. I said forget it, I'm just gonna do it anyway and just pour it on top of the rocks so that way the sand doesn't get all mixed up. That's not what you want. It's just like the ocean. Okay, that's the film. Alright, so so you set this tank up yesterday on your own. Yep. Uh, I wasn't even here. She did it while I was at work. And I gotta say, it looks really, really neat so far. Well, I learned from the best. But <laughs> you didn't learn anything about this from me. This is, <laughs> this is pretty cool, but what all do you have going on here? Well, I have some black live sand from Carib Sea um, in the bottom here. And I decided to do about an inch and a half of substrate just to give me a good surface for everything. And I got in total around 13 pounds of live rock, um, which are, I just have two larger pieces that I kind of stacked on top of each other. So I did a little bit of the cave and it has a whole bunch of different nooks and crannies in it. So I should be able to put coral on it later. So your plan is to mount corals on here eventually. Now, do you have to let it cycle before you add things like that too, even invertebrates? Yes, absolutely. It is kind of like fish. They really need certain water parameters and um, special treatment with corals just because they are pretty sensitive. And so how slow are you going to go? How long will it be before you actually have a fish or shrimp or anything in here? Well, um, it'll probably be a few weeks before I put anything in. Um, I'm going to be doing frequent water tests just to see what's going on. I did put quite a bit of different forms of biological media in there to start it off. I have um, seeded matrix that I bought from the aquarium as well as live rock and live sand um, to go along with this process. Plus I put different products like Activate um, to help with this ammonia cycle as well um, or nitrogen cycle. Well the sand has good bacteria in it too, right? Yeah. And it comes that way? It comes like a... Yeah, it comes in a bag that has liquid in it. And then this live rock also has stuff in it. And plus you put seeded bacteria in there and then you put liquid so it it's pretty much gonna have... Couldn't you just add fish right now? Well, I just want to double check and make sure with everything first. Okay. Well, that's pretty neat. That's really cool. I look forward to seeing stuff in here. I'm sure you guys do too. As soon as you go to do uh, do something like that, we come back and tell us about it. <laughs> yes. That looks really great, and I'm really proud of you. I think you did a good job. Uh, can't wait to see what this thing does. It's really neat. It, it really is just a huge speck, and uh, <laughs> with the saltwater centric light, and I think that that's that's really cool. It looks to me really bright. Yeah, absolutely. And you can switch it to the darker blue mode as well. Um, that's a little bit harder to see on camera because it looks purple. Um, especially with the purple-ish live rock that I have in here. Um, but there's a lot of different ways you can look at it. What is that purple on the live rock? Is it 
That is uh, bacteria and different algae that has grown on there. It almost looks like you can see other little things crawling around on there. Are there little bugs and stuff inside? Yeah, absolutely. There's uh, little cocoa pods and different kind of and different kinds of uh, pests, I guess, that do come with live rock that is preceded from a fish store. Um, in general, you're always gonna have that. Um, Free animals. Yeah. <laughs> But usually if it's a pest, it means it's something that'll reproduce really quickly, right? Yeah, it does. <laughs> are there things that eat those? Um, there are things like with like pest starfish, like Harley Quinn shrimp, they eat those. Um, although you need a lot of pet, pest starfish because usually they end up starving oh, if, yeah? you, if you don't have that. And um, a lot of other things are actually pretty good for corals and different invertebrates that you put in there. How interesting. I'm excited. I'm excited to see where this goes. And uh, thank you so much for sharing your experience with my viewers. Well, until next time, folks, follow your bliss. Keep a clean tank. And we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. <laughs>I learned it from watching you. <laughs> I learned it from watching you. Words, because I actually. It's not worth losing you. Freshwater scrub. Let's do this. No. <laughs>